In December last year, the Omnimotion 24-hour mountain bike challenge was held at Lugwood Ranch, just north of Johannesburg. This 24-hour event in its third successive run saw a strong contingent of cyclists wishing to take part in a very unique mountain bike experience. Lugwood Ranch was transformed into a world-class mountain bike location with good food and clean ablutions so the cyclists could focus on the most important part of the weekend, cycling. If you want Once competitors had made themselves comfortable, it was time for the compulsory team talk, where the logistics of the race ahead were explained. With everyone gathered around, it was apparent that there was a diverse collection of competitors willing to spend 24 hours mountain biking. Beginners, weekend warriors, hardcore soloists and even some roadies were given a chance to compete in a very social atmosphere where emphasis was placed more on having fun than on winning. After the initial starting rush, the teams evened themselves out and the thought of 24 hours of cycling was still fresh in the minds of these mountain biking gladiators. Designed for both beginner and seasoned rider in mind, the 7.1 kilometers of the course wound its way through farms, grasslands and riverbeds, all the while affording the cyclists with some spectacular views of the surrounding countryside. The 24-hour mountain bike racing has a formula unique to other forms of racing where teams made up of four to five people take turns riding around the laid-out course. The team that competes the most number of laps over the 24-hour period wins. Once having completed a lap, the teams have the opportunity to make a changeover as demonstrated here. The only condition being that each team member must complete a minimum of four laps. Managing when to make a changeover is entirely up to the team and this is where a good strategy is key in gaining ground on one's opponent. Apart from the team competition, there are also the soloist competitors. These extremists command much respect from the mountain biking community, and rightfully so, spending nearly 24 hours on a mountain bike through rain and darkness and covering an average of more than 300 kilometers in a 24-hour period is considered either amazing or downright senseless. Keeping track of over 400 cyclists coming and going is an epic task. Thankfully, the Omnimotion team had developed a computerized cyclist tracking system that recorded every team and rider's statistics over the duration of the race. Putting this amazing event together is race director and Omnimotion founder Dmitry Nenkov and race coordinator Michelle Stewart-Murray. The big change is the, the amount of people we've got. It's, it's grown almost double in, in a year. I think from mostly from word of mouth. We haven't advertised um, media-wise. or the, the, the only way we've advertised these entry forms at shops. And word of mouth, it, it's grown, it's almost doubled in the field. We've got more events lined up for the people to, to do during the time. More entertainment. We combine entertainment with the sport. One of the most popular sideline events was the Toss Road Bike Competition. Everyone was eager to interrogate the 85 Peugeot racer. The Peugeot spilled its guts and all truces declared between the mountain bike and the roadie factions came to a metal grinding halt. For example, this year with the 24-hour, we've had about four or five ladies only team. We've got a single lady solo, which is excellent, and that's, that's where my interest is, interest is as well. There's not a lot of um, races or events available for beginners, and when the beginners arrive there, they, they are turned off because of the experienced, the experienced riders that are there are far too good, and they, they're put together in the same classes, and, and it, they just get turned away because it's, it's far too challenging for them at, as a first type of event. So we need to open the doors to, to newcomers to the sport. I think we just want to perfect the, the, what we're doing. We want to perfect it to the point that people love to do our events, they look for our events and we bring pleasure to the rider at the end of the day they must go home and say wow we really enjoyed that. I think that's where we headed for. 24 hour mountain biking is very successful at giving riders of various experience levels a chance to compete in a race whilst forging friendships and camaraderie amongst team members. It has also brought together a group of men who love the outdoors and are always willing to lend a hand to their two wheel counterparts. The 4x4 off-road rescue unit's Ivo Rimmer explains their club's role in mountain bike racing. 
Our job here is to do the race communications and to man the checkpoints along the route. As part of the 4x4 community and the off-road rescue in specific, we've got the vehicles and the radio equipment to actually stay out there for the, the full duration of the race and be able to feed information back to the, the race control back at the start. The rescue unit is set up to serve the community. Now, that obviously is, is very much wilderness search and rescue. But obviously we're not out on rescues all day and every day. So uh, in between that, we can do our bit for the community at, at large as well as this is training for us. This is learning to do communications, being able to work day, night, rain, snow. A Victor 4 zero, Tango 09. Zero, a zero, 09, we've had a report of a break in the barrier tape uh, near checkpoint 3. Can you move out to Victor 20's position and check it for us? We get involved in all sorts of races, mountain bike, uh, road races. The, the, the recent one that we've done was the Grace to Grace, which was uh, a much longer course, but obviously only once round and uh, through some serious ter terrain that needed a 4x4 to get there. Uh, Roger, how are things at that position? The trick is to have a plan. You always end up changing it. But if you've got a plan, at least you've got something to change. But there's always opportunities that crop up in the middle of a, of a, whether it's a race or whether it's an incident that we called out to. And one has to be able to think, and I think that's what the members are there to do, is, to, is that they are trained to be able to respond to whatever crops up rather than just what they're told to do. Most competitors seem to agree that this 24 hour had all the ingredients necessary in making it a very unique and gratifying experience for all. Team spirit. It's a good vibe, seriously good vibe. It's a new experience to me and I'm enjoying it now because I tend to meet people whom I don't know and it's exciting. Team spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Eh? Team spirit, your mind gets you through. It's just your bicycle and yourself. Great for meeting people and there's no hectic race pressure because the race is over 24 hours. So. Oh, it's fantastic. The atmosphere is great. The riders are great. The camaraderie is there. The guys help each other. It's wonderful. I think we've got still got a lot of potential in this country. Uh, there's a lot of people who haven't even heard of the sport yet. And with some good marketing and that kind of thing, I think we've got a good good chance to grow into a well-known sport. I'll be better next day with food sports. As the day wore on, tired cyclists retired to their camps and began preparing for a long night ahead. For safety's sake, a primary light source of at least 10 watts of power is enforced and a secondary light source such as a torch is recommended. Cycling on your own in the warm high felt night is a tantalising experience, one you'll remember for a long time to come. come up with some extraordinary excuses for not finishing the race and we don't know if we can believe this one. Where am I? Where am I? I lost my bike! I lost my bike! Even scarier than the Blair Witch, though, was the Omni-Man, whose super amazing fire stick trick led him down at the last minute while trying to put the abused road bike out of its misery. Many minutes and litres of petrol later, the badly injured 85 Persia was finally on its way to roadie heaven, much to the delight of mountain bikers everywhere. And what became of Omni-Man? To this day, it's still a mystery. Early the next morning, a steady flow of weary cyclists continued to do their best. Weather conditions had changed overnight, with some pre-dawn rain drenching the entire course, resulting in some of the more technical sections, like the popular drop-off, becoming a lot more hazardous. Yes! Right. Bloody shit. The now booby-trapped drop-off claimed many an unsuspecting cyclist. Oh dear. Eventually, after 24 gruelling hours of cycling, the sirens sounded off once again, this time to signal the end of the race. Cyclists had to complete their current lap before handing in the towel. There were prizes all round for the winning teams, as well as lots of clapping.
One of the most deserving winners, though, was soloist Grant Usher, who alone had completed 46 laps covering some 330 kilometers while only sleeping for two hours. Why does he do this? I think it's more personal thing. It's not really racing against anyone else. It's not a speed thing. It's just all about endurance and just trying to see how far you can really push yourself. So I think out there as well, it's actually more mind game than anything else. I think everyone's pretty much tired. Just depends on sort of who wants to carry on more. You just got to fight yourself more than anything and fight your mind. All in all, a very successful event that is sure to get bigger and bigger each year. So I hope to see you at the next Omnimotion 24-hour mountain bike challenge.